Okay. A, a big donation from WRG Carmen, who says, thank you for inviting us to participate in the stream. I hope Ben allows it to allows us to do it again. So Overlord Ben must give his blessing. <laughs> and a donation from Automaton2000 says, stop the accordion. Where are the bagpipes? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the other drawer. Uh, welcome to Ineffable. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, for those that don't know, Ineffable is one of the, the big minds behind the data core at the moment, uh, along with a few others that took over after uh, TA7 dropped it. But So welcome to the stream. Thank you. <laughs> Absolute pleasure to have you. Very much so. I believe you've got a few things to show us this week, including a new feature for the data core itself. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd give people a bit of an overview of what data core is and what it does, because I know that not everyone use it regularly, and I do think it is a fantastic resource that I'm really uh, proud to be able to contribute to. So, assuming this all works, because I haven't tested it and, you know, check. Uh, you it's part of the appeal, don't worry. There we go, we're on. Cool, so, Perfect. Um, data core, there's kind of two main components to data core, which is the website, which is at datacore.app, and the Discord bot, which is available in, in multiple Discord servers, including the, um, Star Trek Timelines Community Discord. I'm going to run through the website today. The bot mirrors a lot of the functionality here and has a few extra bits, and it's really worth checking out. But um, I'm going to stick with this for now because uh, sharing my Discord would be uh, hectic. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. So, so Data Core is a, a set of tools and a database to kind of help players make the most out of their Star Trek Timelines experience. Um, one of the big features is is crew stats, so it you can look up the details of any crew, um, including you know all, all the official in-game information, plus information sourced from the big book or, or calculated, such as voyage ranks and gold ranks, um, uh, and including information sourced from the community as well, such as nicknames. Um, I, I picked a really very relevant example. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you can. One of the things I like about Data Core is the, the, the search functionality. It's quite powerful. We need to document it a little bit better. But the fact that you can filter and sort, so I can do things like show me trait romantic, and then sort that by tier, and I can very easily see the top romantic crew. Or hmm. I can sort by rarity and easily see the five stars with, with the romantic trait. There's, it's a lot of power there once you, once you get the hang of it. Um, now, in addition to those kind of crew stats, we also have a, a visual display of the big book of beholds, um, which is a really nice, a nice way to, to view things. Um, one of the, the differences between this and the big book sheet is that crew from all rarities are grouped together, which can sometimes mm -hmm. give the impression that, say, Commando Crusher is, is equal in value to First Officer Burnham. So that's a little thing to be aware of, but She's it is not. a great... A great resource to quickly reach a view where things are at. <laughs> um, so, there's, I mean, there's, there's other bits and pieces. I, I would say, though, that, and there's a behold helper, which is quite useful as well. So, if you're in a situation where you've got a behold and you're not quite sure who to pick, you're able to, to go through, pick out the crew you're, you're, you're faced with, and very quickly you can get a summary of their, of all the relevant information you should need to be able to make a accurate pick. So you can, as you can see here, you can see their skills, you can see their voyage ranks, their tiers, their events, their costs, and, and the big book entries as well. Um, and yeah, re really handy resource. That said, I, I, I personally feel that the heart of Data Core and where it really comes into its strength is the, the player tools that are on offer. So by inputting data that you can download from your Star Trek Timelines account, by, by clicking through on the link, you're able to unlock a whole suite of tools customized to your account and your Star Trek Timelines experience. So, um, to give a little bit of a demo, this finishes loading. Is that the Australian internet there? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes it's, it's, oh, I, I, could, I could rant for half an hour about the Australian internet, to be honest. <laughs> well, well you do have time. a half hour slot here, so yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you feel so inclined. <laughs> I have right, to say, so, yeah. because we, we all work on the, the three of us work on the big book in varying um, degrees. 
Like I, I use data core more than I use my own resource because I have to consult it for pretty much everything. And the way you can sort uh, sort by traits or variants or whatever, by base, whatever you need to do. Um, I use that, you know, all the time, have for years essentially. So um, I, I know you're here to plug it, but we, we, we all use it, you know, daily as well. It's, it's invaluable. It's, it's in my opinion, the best community tool out there. Thank you. I mean, that's, that's really great feedback. And there's, there's quite a few people who are involved in, in building out data core now, which is part of the reason we've had so many amazing features that have come out and so many more that are very close to, to coming out in the near future, which is just, just great. But anyway, um, in terms of the player tools, so if, if you import your data, um, the first thing you see is the voyage calculator. And I think this is probably the most used feature of data core because it lets you very easily um, determine, if not necessarily the best crew, a combination of your crew that are pretty good for the particular voyage that you have available based on the, the slots and the skills and the antimatter and the, the bonuses. Um, and you, you know, you can also have to see your own crew. One of the really nice things is that you can share your profile and you can actually upload this and get a link that you can share with anyone to let them easily see your roster, your items and, and your crew. And that's, I mean, I personally as a newer player, found it super invaluable to be able to share my profile with others and, and be able to get the advice from them without having to send them, you know, dozens of screenshots to get, a, get across what my, my roster was at. Um, speaking of the voyage calculator, though, there is that, that new thing which I've just been tinkering around with, which I thought would be useful to kind of launch unofficially today. Um, anyone who uses data core for voyage calculation might have noticed that we added this little extra tick box, which is around collecting anonymous data. And the reason for this is that we wanted to start collecting just basic information about the results of voyage calculations, about what the voyage calculator actually turned up for people when they tried to, to run a voyage. And based on that, we have built out the Voyage Hall of Fame, which should be live on the site now-ish um, if people go there and look under the Pages menu. And so this is essentially showing you out of all the voyages that have been run through the data core calculator, uh, always in the last seven days and last 30, who came out on top, who was most often featured in, the, in that list of, of crew who should be in the voyage. And it's interesting because it's essentially an amalgamation of voyage power, which you know is the kind of the equivalent of voyage rank, but also with vo with crew commonality, because crew who more people have are more likely to show up in voyages. And you can really see that reflected here when you look at, look at these top crew, because many of them are uh, crew from megas or crew from popular events. Um, but at the same time, some of them are just very powerful crew, like Braxton. Um, and yeah, I think there's this is pretty basic. But over time, I'm hoping that we can build a lot more into this because we can look at things like, you know, which crew had the best match for slots most often, which crew um, were actually picked over specific other crew often, you know, it, we might be able to determine that if someone has an, a immortalized, um, an immortalized crew, sorry, two different immortalized crew, that actually the second one never shows up in voyages for them because the first one is, is always better in every context. And that's, I think, there's some quite clever insights that can be gleaned out of out of this data. So from my understanding, yeah. um, Data Core uses the old voyage algorithm from the IM Picard community tool, which I think launched 2019, thereabouts. Now that tool is discontinued, but I think I remember reading that, that you were looking into maybe um, rewriting that algorithm for voyages. Is that right? Yeah, so we have so a couple of the, the developers who have been contributing to data core are busy at work on improving the voyage calculation stuff. Um, and I know there's some work to integrate the chewable voyage calculator and some work to integrate um, a, a rebuild of the voyage calculator that should enable more options because what we often hear is that the the data core voyage calculator favors antimatter too heavily, or that it, in some people's view, um, trends too much towards crew with high proficiencies and low bases because those can give the greatest maximum voyage, but also prove, pose a bigger risk of, of not meeting particular thresholds. And so I'm really hopeful that we can get the calculator to a place where you can tell it what you want and it can actually tailor the results based on the type of voyage you're mm. after. 
That's interesting. I'm noticing uh, a yeah. big one spot, but you've got Soji Asher right at the top on all three metrics there, and I imagine that'll expand on time. And I think we're seeing a lot of, uh, I think when you first sort of showed this off to us in the in the data core chat, like um, you're seeing like like a lot of the mega crew at the top there and a lot of the free campaign at the top. It'd be quite interesting to see like a, a tier of that without the kind of the freebies of the giveaways. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's um, a lot of potential. I uh, hope I'm not lagging, I just cut out a bit. No, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what I was going to say is that, like, I could see, like, something like this Voyage Hall of Fame thing, because, like, obviously we've got a lot of the common Voyage names, but I could see you expanding out this thing to be like, you know, this crew uh, skill set extremely easily replaced, like, what is your next immediate upgrade? Who should you be looking for uh, to get the best, like, uh, Voyage anime increase like, uh, versus, like, you know, what should you be looking to, like, increase? I could see this, like, functionality specifically being really useful for that. Mm. Yeah, I hope so. And there's some similar things that are going on as well, because we have a, a contributor who's working on essentially a citation helper, which is designed hmm. to tell you that if you have a spare citation, which of your crew should you cite for the best increase in your voyages? And it actually does that by hmm. running the voyage calculator hundreds of times, looking at the scenario where you upgrade each one and looking at where your voyages oh, are wow. increased by the most. Gosh. It's going to be fascinating. I'm really excited for it. That's some big brain stuff. I'm really excited to see that. <laughs> yeah. One of the issues that that I've come across over time is it's it's sort of opaque, uh, the value a crew offers over their replacement option. For example, on shuttles, if someone's at the top of the list, bam, you pick them and, and you know what you're getting. But oftentimes, if you pick the one beneath them or, or two slots below, you're going to get pretty much the same shuttle su success chance. So... Something, having something like that for voyages where you can see, well, you know, if you were to freeze this crew and replace them with your second best option, you're only losing a minute. Maybe that's worth the crew slot. So the, the way voyages are, they're complex enough that it, to be opaque in many cases. And so it would be great to have something where you can see, you know, uh, this crew's offering you this much um, uh, value, this many minutes over, over the next crew. And that, again, ties into citation options, um, freezing options, and, and trying to keep space on your roster. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one thing we can even do is just start to collect the the voyage times associated with voyages for each crew and then average that out. So we can say that the average voyage that Luau Paris is part of lasts for six hours, 10 minutes. And that will actually tell you which crew um, are part of those really long voyages that everyone really aspires to be able to get. Mm. Call it the, uh, the Roy Kirk factor. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that, um, but it's like, it's like I, I again, I, I want to like plug data core because I think I was, um, cause I've, I've used this tons of times for using in the big book, but one of the best new features you come out was the pole star retrieval mm -hmm. thing because I plugged my data into that and it showed me like tons of combinations I hadn't even think about. I was like, it was, I was, it was able to narrow it down to like RAF miles I Brian. I was like, wait, but I didn't realize I was an option. It's like, no, if you just do that and that, and it's like, it really does highlight a ton of like really e like easily missable options and it's like the trait maximum takes like, like it takes like five ten minutes at maximum if you like import all of your data um like it's like incredibly quick for the amount of data that it juggles like for all the functionality it has like it's ridiculously good yeah I, i'm that's certainly um I, I find it really valuable too and that's what i was going to lean into next because it actually leads into my uh, more practical part of of today so I actually have Max Quantum right now, which means I can do a retrieval. Oh. And <laughs> using Data Core, I'm able to go, show me the tier one crew who are max rarity five. And I could maybe say, show me people I don't own. Or I could say, you know, show me someone I don't own who's part of chain of command. Hmm. Um, or I could say, you know, show me the best crew sorted by tier that are five stars that don't involve me having to use up one of my skill this is, stars. This is my favorite stars. feature. I love just being able to take off all my skill and rarity poles and just going, right, who can I just use my skills? I love this. And so, so from here, I can see that, you know, I could pick up Interface LaForge by pulling one of these combos with, with the, the pole stars I have available. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do that because I want to make things a bit more fun for our viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull just a hero pole star. So mm. I'm going to just pull out a random hero. And I can use data core to show me my, my options here. I can actually go, show me heroes who are in the portal. 
sorted by tier. And so we can so see it, here that if I'm, it ranges oh, on. quite a bit in, in quality here. You can go from your Gary Sevens to your Binars, you've got your Rachel Garrett, you've got your Captain Bites. You're taking quite a gamble here, but I appreciate the, the metal. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, I, I thought this was good because it's, it's tempting the RNG gods a bit. It seems a bit thematic because, you know, I, I think that everyone who's been part of this stream, everyone who's donated is really, you know, stepping up doing acts of heroism and, and supporting the great work of, of, char of um, charity. Um, and yeah, I, I could get Vargas. I could, I could join Idol, Idol and pull Vargas live on stream. But <laughs> Don't get your I do up. have... I, know, <laughs> I do have an idea that might help, though. And that is that I'm going to offer a sacrifice to the RNG gods because I'm Ooh, going to do okay. a straight pull with my 10k on off first. Ooh, okay. And hopefully, if they've got any malice towards me, it will come out here, <laughs> and then my retrieval will be good. Clean so, the pipe, says like as Auto likes to say. I like it. Okay, let's see. Let's see. What? Hmm. Mm. Well, that took the hit. That took the hit. Yeah. Took the hit. I, I was hopeful when I saw Neelix, but you know. Anyway, now now for the main event. Let's, okay. let's go on. Okay. So I'm going to... Buckle in, everybody. Find some reckless yeah. use of quantum on this stream tonight. <laughs> ludicrous quantum. Oh. <clears throat> Did you see that ludicrous display right. last night? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got my fingers crossed for you. Thank you. I see, yeah, we I see a lot of purple crew. Good lord. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, I could. There's, there is a, a three star um, hero, so that's potentially the worst case scenario. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, oh, no! I can't believe it. There's an actual binar. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's I, I didn't a binar. I didn't mention this on stream, but I did say in Discord that if I somehow got a binar, I would commit him to cite them, so I'm going to do that now. <laughs> oh, I don't have slots. <laughs> I will cite them, though. I will cite them. I, I'm A likely that. story! <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I'm... I'm I look forward to, to, to seeing the, the proof in the pudding, but... Yeah. That was quite a gamble! That was. <laughs> yep, yep, I, I'm... I just, I can't believe that out of, you know, 80-something crew, the the... The possibility I flat I was talking about for a week actually came true. <laughs> I'm impressed. You said the word hero, the binar appeared. <laughs> but no, thank you very much for uh, showing us all these tools. And also, you know, thank you to yourself and Flash and Sugar Osiris and Dam and everyone else on the Data Core team. Uh, you guys have been putting in some monumental work lately. And, you know, you guys are doing this just for a hobby essentially you know and there's a lot of work and a lot of development going into what is possibly the most one of the most invaluable player resources in the game you know essentially there are a lot of people that would say i wouldn't be still playing this if it wasn't for the data core so you know thank you very much for sort of coming in here and showing us some of these new things that are coming up yeah no problems thanks for having me on i've, I've really enjoyed the stream even if i did get no sleep as a result <laughs> <laughs> go to bed <laughs> It's for the kids, it's fine. It's, it's, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on, you're, you're an absolute pleasure. You're something of a role model for the kids. <laughs> oh, well, that there's this cue. Oh, uh, <sighs> yes, it's, uh, it's, it's for the children. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a role model. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a role model. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, no, thank you very much for coming, and we will see you soon. Um, okay.